horizontal circular plate is suspended from three wires attached to a support at D that form 30 degree angles with the vertical. So here's our support at D. We've got these three forces coming down, each of them making 30 degree angles to the vertical. Now to make this a free body diagram you would also need to have some sort of force pulling up which we know will be equal to the weight of the plate. We've got to label things and we would need directions. But this isn't an equilibrium problem. We're given that the X component of the force exerted by the wire on AD on the plate is 110.3 newtons. So the X component is 110.3 newtons. What we want to know is just what is this force AD in Cartesian form? Or if we wanted to put it in direction cosines, what would the cosines themselves be? This is a projection in a plane problem. How do I know this? Because I have a line AO which is in the plane XZ. So as soon as you have a line like that that's in the plane, you know that's what you're dealing with. To do that, I'm going to draw my triangles. So in this case, my force AD, I know is at a 30 degree angle to the vertical because that's given in the problem. And I'm going to have some projection in the plane. I'm going to call my projection AO because it lies along that line. It's a, not a line segment. This is a force. And in fact, the other force that makes it up is the Y component of AD. So the vector AD, that's the force acting at point D along the line toward A, is made up of two forces, ADY and AO. AO can be further broken down into a force that lies along the z-axis, which I'm going to call ADZ, and a force that lies along the x-axis, or the negative x-axis in this case, ADX. So the three forces there, ADX, ADY, and ADZ, add together, these are the components of the vector AD. AO lies in the XZ plane. Once I've got this, I can use some basic trig. ADY is going to be AD times the cosine of the angle in between them, which you know is 30 degrees from the problem. And AO, that's the vector that lies along AO, in the direction of AO, has got to be AD sine 30. These are forces. They will have units of newtons. I also know that ADX, from my other triangle, has to be AO sine 50. Well, AO has to be AD, it I just is AD sine 30, I just found that out, times sine 50. And you're given in the problem that ADX is 110.3. So all of a sudden you can solve for AD. AD is 110.3 divided by sine 30 divided by sine 50. That gives you 287.97 when you solve. That is the answer to your first question, as soon as you put it in three sig figs with units in a box. That's the magnitude of AD. To find the direction cosines, you have to keep going. So on our little circular force system, Cartesian form is over here, we have gone from magnitude and direction in one direction to Cartesian form, and now we want to turn around and go back. ADZ, if I wanted to finish getting these components, is AO cosine 50. This is AD sine 30 cosine 50, and that is 92.553 newtons. ADY, similarly, I'm just, I'm just plugging back into the equations I already had to get some numbers, is AD cosine 30. This is 249.39 newtons. Once you have these three components, ADX, ADY, and ADZ, remember ADX is 110.3 given in the problem, you can say that the cosine of each of the direction cosines is the component divided by the magnitude of the total vector. Generally, we write it with AD on the other side, but in this case, we have AD, so what we're looking for are these angles. Each of those you can solve by plugging in. Make sure that as you're doing arc cosines and arc tangents and things like that, that you keep a lot more significant digits than just five or heavens. Four, three is never going to be enough because the arc trig functions or the inverse trig functions are very sensitive to the precision in your numbers. So when you plug these in, you get theta x is 67.479 degrees. Theta z is 30 degrees, which is extremely comforting because you've already been told that the angle between the vertical and AD is 30 degrees. 
What can you say? Uh, I'm sorry, that didn't have anything to do with what you're dealing with. His theta z is 30 degrees. That's the angle to the positive z axis from the AD. Theta y gives you 71.253 degrees. But think about what you're doing. Here is my force AD. My positive y axis is up. This angle is not going to be 71 degrees. Now, what, remember that your calculator is going to give you principal values. So when you come in here, you have to say which of the values is it actually. That's going to be 180 minus 71. So theta y is going to be 109 degrees. The AD to the positive x-axis is 67.5. To three sig figs, theta z is 30 degrees to the positive z-axis. And those are your answers.